Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on uh, this third Sunday of Easter. Uh, obviously, we're going to be recording this. Uh, Easter blessings to all of you. Uh, church office, just to remind you, is still open from 9 to 2 uh, during the weekdays. Uh, if you'd like to have the Lord's Supper, we're offering that on Sunday mornings uh, uh, between 8 and uh, 11 ish so if you'd like to be part of that please call the church office and uh set an appointment with that as well um praying for all of you uh that you stay safe and that you stay healthy uh we'll be following the order of service as it is printed in our worship bulletin and you'll see that uh on the screen here so uh we'll be following uh, what we call responsive prayer two um and uh we'll just follow along with the liturgy O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pains of Shehol laid hold of me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called unto the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you, for you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe when I spoke, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading is for this third Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 2. Peter standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1. If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the Feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him you are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, 
since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass wither, withers and the flower fade, falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is taken from St. Luke's Gospel, the 24th chapter. That very day, two of them were going to a village of Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these three days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow to heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So he drew near to the village to which they were going, and he acted as if he was going farther. But, he, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We now make confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day.
Till Trump from east to west Shall wake the dead in the to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis for our message uh, for this weekend is taken from all the lessons that we read from the book of Acts, from 1 Peter, and from the gospel according to St. Luke. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus our Lord, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. There's been a phrase that's been going around in my house a lot this past month, um, and I have to agree with my family and uh, with this phrase. Sometimes I don't always agree, but this one I agree with. And the phrase is, it's not the same. It's not the same. Our life has been changed. It's not the same. School, not the same. Children are going to the school buildings. They are staying home. They are remote learning. My wife, who's teaching, is teaching remotely. It's not the same. Church, obviously, not the same. The message is still the same, but how we gather together as God's people, how we proclaim that word, it's not the same. And even in our society, it's not the same. Going to the grocery store is a, a, a whole new adventure these days. You got the blocks on the on the ground. Got to stay six feet apart. You got to get there early in the morning in order to get uh, your groceries. Still amazed that toilet paper is at such a high demand. We wash our hands at every turn, and not just a simple wash, but twenty seconds. Commercials are talking about how we are to say or uh, serve one another, and even in my pastoral office, you know not being able to make visits, being able to go to the hospital. In fact, a couple weeks ago, at a funeral, and we just went to the cemetery. It was a graveside service. There was, there, was, there was nine of us, plus me, ten of us together. And as I sat there as one of our faithful members, and I kept saying to myself, this is not the same. This is weird, as I kept saying. It's not the same. Well, on that first Easter, a lot of people were saying that as well. It's not the same. It's not the same. Well, I want to go to our, our, our first reading from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. And, and in that, uh, just a little kind of in the context, and we're going to hear the first part of the story in about a month or so on Pentecost. This is the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit comes upon the apostles, and they begin to proclaim God's word. They begin to proclaim Jesus as Lord, and, and they're doing it in all of these very various languages known to the world. And as they are doing that, people thought they were crazy. In fact, right before this, it says, they have been drinking wine, and, and Peter says, what are you talking about? It's nine o'clock in the morning. We have not been drinking wine. But he says these words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him, meaning Jesus, both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you sacrificed. This Jesus, this miracle worker, this prophet, this teacher was unlike any other teacher, any other prophet, any other miracle worker. He was not the same as them. In fact, Peter even tells us these wonderful words, he is both Lord and Christ. Now the word Lord, and what you think of this definition, Lord means redeemer, someone who has come to redeem us, to pay the ransom, to set us free. And the word uh, crucified or Christ means the one who is our savior. That's a, a Old Testament a word for Christ. Messiah, Messianic, means Savior. So this Jesus was more than just 
a, a miracle worker, more than just a teacher rabbi, more than just a prophet. He is Lord, Redeemer, and Christ our Savior. Well, this same Peter who shared this, these words on that Pentecost also wrote in our epistle lesson in 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. In fact, if you jump down to verse 18, and, and uh, you should be able to see it on the screen over here. Verse 18. Knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. You have been ransomed. You have been redeemed. You have been saved from what? From your empty way of life, your feudal ways. As one translation of the Bible says, your dead end ways that led to nowhere. But Jesus did this with his precious blood, not with gold or silver, not with other money, but with his own precious blood. It cost Jesus his very life. Jesus went to the cross so that you could be redeemed, so that you could be ransomed, so that you could be saved. Jesus did that for you. Now, in our world, that message makes no sense whatsoever. Why would a Lord and a Messiah want to suffer and die in order to save anybody. If anybody who's going to suffer and to die, it would be the Lord and Christ's enemies. But Jesus did something totally unusual, totally out of character of our sinful ways. He laid himself out there so that it would not be the same. It would not be the same. Our gospel reading from Luke chapter 24. It's the road to Emmaus. You probably recognize the familiar picture, uh, the painting that's been around for many, many years. Jesus rose from the dead that Easter morning, and two of his disciples, we know the name of one of them, Cleopas, was making, they were making their way from Jerusalem to Emmaus. It was about seven miles and somewhere along the way, sometime that day, they're talking about what had happened. How they thought that this Jesus was the one. And as they were walking, Jesus comes up next to him and joins in the conversation. But we're told that Jesus was not recognized by them. And as they are going along, they're having this conversation. And Jesus asks, so what are you talking about? And they said... Are you the only person who has no idea what's happened in Jerusalem? Have you been living in a cave, in a grave? Yes. Jesus said, well, well yeah, well, yes, I was. But they, Jesus says, well, what, what were you talking about? He says, this Jesus, this Jesus of Nazareth, whom, um, you know, who had, uh, did all these things, who, if you jump to verse, uh, um, in uh, 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 verse 20, in 19 and 20, and Jesus says, you know, this Jesus concerning was a great prophet, mighty in deed and word. He was a, a miracle worker. He was a great teacher. He was a prophet. But he was put to death by our chief priests and our religious leaders. Our religious leaders murdered our Messiah. Well, at least that's what we hope. Verse 21, I think this is key. But we had hoped that he was to be the one that would redeem Israel. We had hoped that he would make things right, that he would redeem us, would save us. But they were thinking in very political terms, very earthly terms. They were hoping Jesus would go into Jerusalem, overthrow the Roman government, those religious leaders in power, and set up his kingdom so that they could rule with Jesus. But then this Jesus who was dead, something strange was happening. 
In fact, they even said going on, yet besides all of this, it is now the third day since these things happened. And some of our women in our company got up early in the morning and went to the tomb and they didn't find the body of Jesus. He wasn't there. And if that wasn't weird enough, they were telling us that they saw angels who told them he was alive. And now Peter and John also went to the tomb and found it empty and couldn't find Jesus. This is weird. This is not what should be going on. This is not the same. Jesus should be in the tomb with the stone rolled in front of it. We should be grieving our loss, the loss of our friend, but more importantly, the loss of our dreams and our hopes that God is going to restore his kingdom. I'm recording. And my picture in my mind is Jesus is walking with them, shaking his head, going, you guys missed it. You missed it. In fact, he even calls them, you foolish ones, slow to heart to believe. Verse 26, this is key. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? That word, it is necessary, dea in Greek. It's a, a divine necessity. Was it not godly appointed that Jesus would suffer and die and then rise again and thus enter and ushering in his kingdom. Verse 27. And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, so the Old Testament, that's the Bible they had, he interpreted to them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Now, if I had a time machine, this is where I would want to go. This event, the road to Emmaus, to hear what Jesus said, starting in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and especially Genesis 3.15, where the Lord said to Adam and Eve, in order to save them from their sins, this phrase, and you will bruise his heel and he will crush your head. That's talking about Jesus suffering his death in order to destroy Satan, sin, and death over us. And then going on through the whole Old Testament, getting to Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Isaiah chapters 52 and 53, that wonderful suffering servant song where Isaiah some 800 years before it happened, described what Jesus was going through. That he would be rejected, despised, and we would esteem him not. We would think he was the one that was being punished by God. Smitten and afflicted. But he did it for you. And he did it. That's the message that we have. That's the not the same anymore. In Jesus' death and his resurrection, everything has changed. No longer will Satan and sin and death reign over you. No longer will the, oh, it's the same old thing, be said because we have the victory of eternal life. That's why we can say, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Now, Jesus, going through and teaching uh, the, the, the scriptures to him, uh, he, he had a very specific message that he, he wanted to share with them. Kind of, I, I kind of put it this way. I have these glasses, uh, and these glasses help me read. Now, if I was to take anybody else's glasses, whether it's one of my children or my wife, and I put those glasses on, I would be doing a lot of this, and I wouldn't be able to see it. It would be blurry. I couldn't see it. But 
I put on my glasses and I can see. Well, when we read the scriptures, I like to say we have to put on Jesus glasses. Not just any part of Jesus, but this part. This main teaching that we, get this down, we are saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus. We are saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus. That's important to know. That when you read the Bible, you have to read it through these glasses. That you have been saved by what God has done. His grace found in Christ Jesus our Lord. And, and you receive that through faith. Through the gift of faith that has been given to you in the waters of holy baptism. Now, this grace and this faith, as I mentioned, comes to us in the waters of holy baptism. Back in our first reading in, in Acts chapter 2, um, when the people were confronted with this message of who Jesus was and what had happened, they asked, they asked, what can we do? What shall we do? Verse 37 and verse 38, Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of all your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent, a changing of our ways, of 180. And this repentance talks about our actions, our words, our thinking of what we believe in. This repentance is always following Jesus. We live in a sinful world. We are simply human beings, and many times we want to walk away from Jesus. We don't always want to do what he says, but God calls us to repentance. He calls us to faith in him, knowing we have been saved through his grace so that we can receive the forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life in him. Peter went on in our second reading in our epistle lesson. Turn to verse 21. It should be right over here somewhere. Peter says, Who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. God raised Jesus from the dead. We believe that Jesus did rise from the dead, that he physically rose again. That's why we can say Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. It's not some spiritual resurrection, but it was a physical bodily resurrection that Jesus rose from the grave and now lives and reigns throughout all eternity so that on the last day, you will physically rise from the dead and live and reign throughout all eternity. It's not the same anymore. We live as God's people. We know that one day we will rise again and go home to heaven and be with Jesus forevermore. We have been given hope and we've been given faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you see that? Now the word faith and hope in Hebrew, those two words have the same root word. It means to trust. To believe. That's what it is. And those are given to us, given to you as a gift. Faith and hope in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's not the same. Yes. Our world is not the same anymore. But Jesus is always the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And every day when we wake up, we can thank God that he is always the same, making our lives not the same anymore. That he gives us faith that through his grace, we have life in him. One more time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the church. Please note, I'll add each of the petitions with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and you will respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. You have heard our pleas for mercy, O Lord, given up your Son to be our Savior. Hear us now as we come to you on behalf of ourselves and all people according to their needs. Our hearts have burned in us, O Lord, as your word has been read and preached. Keep our faith from growing cold and grant us grace that we may not waver in faith or succumb to temptation. Give to us and to your children receptive hearts that we may hear and hearing believe and believing be steadfast in this faith and hope all of our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have cleansed us, O Lord, with water and the word and baptism. You have marked us as your own people. Give to us grace that we may live out this faith in holy lives, lifting up your name in word and works for as long as we live. Guide us that with souls purified by obedience to the truth, we may love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless your church, O Lord, that she may welcome the stranger in Christ's name and manifest the unity of faith in the bonds of love. Gather together those who are separated, preserve their faith by your word until all precautions and shelter measurements have passed. Bless Matthew, our president of our synod, Dan, our district president, Tim, our circuit visitor, our pastors and our teachers, and all other church workers. Bless those training for church work vocations, Bless each of us as we live out our baptismal vocation of worship, witness, prayer, and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard our nation, O Lord, that we may enjoy peace and security in the face of threat and danger. Bless Donald, our president, the congregate, our Congress of our United States, Eric, our governor, all state and local officials, that they may fulfill their offices faithfully. Bless all emergency and medical workers and the members of our armed forces who protect us and teach the nations the ways of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver us from all afflictions. Grant us strength to bear all our burdens, O Lord. Hear us in particular for Russell Miller, the father of Amy Maloney, Nancy Losher, Karen Fueling, Paul Meyer, Les Painter, Christy Grubb, Ralph Settemeyer, Paul Nickham, and the family and friends of Mud Bud Scheiman, the father of Sue Braun, Braun, who had passed away this past week. According to your gracious will, heal the sick, relieve those who suffer, comfort the grieving, and give peace to the dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all grace and mercy, we give you thanks and praise for the son, Silas, that you have given to Cody and Erica's ship. Be with Silas and mother and family. Bring him to the waters of holy baptism that he too may have the gift of eternal life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stay with us, O Lord, and be our strength and weakness and our hope in time of despair. Your gracious will once kept the saints in faith even unto death. Keep us, we pray, with them in your faith and fear that we may be found faithful when Christ comes again in his glory to bring fulfillment of all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept, O Lord, the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring for all your goodness and generosity. And with all our song of praise, accept our tithes and offerings that your church may have the resource to proclaim your gospel and care for the poor and those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and whatever other things we need, O Lord, we pray you to grant us in the name of and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose death has been 
uh, made full atonement for our sin and whose resurrection has granted to us the promise of our all, own joyful resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen let us pray O God through the humiliation of your son you raised up the fallen world grant to your faithful people rescue from the peril of everlasting death and perpetual gladness and eternal joys through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.